pond. We're about to pollinate you with a whole lot of information. <laughs> Our very own nectar of knowledge, is that what we're calling him these days? <laughs> He's getting into something special today. A little bit of a stretch, <laughs> maybe. Let's find out. TAs in Palm Beach Garden shining a light. Everything from honeybees, beautiful blooms. You are Ooh, just... our character. Ooh. Fly away, TA. Let's get it going. Good morning. <laughs> it is pollinator week here at the Palm Beaches, and we're at Palm Beach Creamed Honey, and there is honey stacked to the ceilings in this place because they're at the peak of their honey harvesting seasons. Sierra's here, and you have, I'm looking in the, the, the hives behind me, you have stuff from all over the Palm Beaches and the Treasure Coast. That's right. We keep bees within about a two-hour radius, and we are in peak honey extraction mode. We've harvested over 6,000 pounds of honey just in the past three weeks. <laughs> So uh, it's a little intense. <laughs> we can't even move around in here. This is this is our place <laughs> this morning. Uh, I want to go down here to what's on the table. And a lot of this charcuterie, a lot of the hamburger, a, a lot of this stuff wouldn't exist if there wasn't pollinators. Kind of take us through that. That's right. We all know that bees make honey. That's the most obvious food we get from an insect. But without our pollinator friends, the only thing we would have left on this table would be the bun for the hamburger, the lettuce, the olives, and the crackers. Wow. Literally, that's it. We need our pollinators for all of our fruits and vegetables, nuts and berries and seeds. Um, they're super important. And without them, life would be pretty boring. So people can help out actually by planting like a pollinator friendly garden. Explain that. That's right. So pollinators need flowers. So putting a diverse profile of landscaping in your yard, even just one plant, one native plant. Natives are easy. They grow very easily in our area without a lot of extra water. So plant something, plant natives, you know, it's uh, they need it. And Al over here, he's uh, taking some of the honey and putting it into the extractor. He had something about pesticides, kind of do it where you need it, not all over. That's right. So you can spot treat because pesticides, you know, they don't only kill the things we don't want, they kill the things we do want as well. So spot treating is an easy way to, um, you know, be, use pesticides sparingly. And this one seems like an obvious, don't touch their habitats, just let them be. Yes, I mean, we let have, them be. Let I them didn't be. Ah, be. <laughs> so we have over 300 species of native bees just in Florida wow. and over 4,000 species of native bees in the United States. Most of them are ground dwelling. So letting your leaves fall to the ground and leaving them there, leaving sandy patches undisturbed. Most of those bees are ground dwelling and they are super important to our ecosystem as well. So much interesting information this morning. Thank you, Sierra, very much. Uh, if you have something you want us to shine a light on, you can email me at shiningalight at wptv.com. And for a Friday, Ashley and Holony, I feel like I look fabulous. You look fabulous. Just for a Friday. You, you always look fabulous. You know what, um, my, my girls and I, we've had an opportunity to spend time with Sierra. She showed us her whole setup and she taught us about the queen bee, the importance of the queen bee. Um, and so now I tell my kids, I'm yeah. the queen bee. They didn't don't, already don't know? Don't mess with mama. They knew. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. You're the queen bee. You're not Beyonce. <laughs> Have a great time. We'll be right back.